Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by eating ono and keeping it pono. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and it's only pono when it's ono. Got me thinking about ono food first thing in the morning. Well, good thing I have the Hawaii Verse app so I can check out a bunch of deals to local businesses. Make sure you head to the App Store and download our free app so you can start supporting local businesses here in Hawaii. And as always, if you want to be a part of our wonderful Patreon community, make sure you check us out on patreon.com slash Hawaiiverse podcast. You can get exclusive access to bonus content, leave questions for our guests, and find out cool updates before anyone else. All right, let's introduce our very special guest today. Our guest today is a venture capitalist based in Honolulu, Hawaii. He is the co-founder and CEO of Emotional Intelligence Ventures which is a psychedelic wellness company. He began his career in the Washington, D.C. techno club scene and later brought his business acumen to angel investing. Over the past two decades, he has supported ventures spanning nightlife, tech, real estate, and wellness industries. This father of two is also the executive chairman of his holding company, Orthogonal Thinker, which is a socially conscious wellness platform. Orthogonal is focused on a new pharma paradigm of food and psychoactive compounds as medicine and has nearly two dozen holdings as of summer 2021. He has welcomed us into his home today and I am honored to have him on the podcast. His name is David Nixad. Hello, David. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Good. Aloha Kamaka. Great to have you here and uh, long time overdue. Yes, it's always good to see you. You always have good energy. We've been talking about this for a while, so I'm happy the stars align and we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, in your beautiful place. Thank, Thank you for you so welcoming much. us in. Of course. Yeah, so we have a lot to get into. Um, every time we, we talk, you know, outside, outside of this podcast, yeah. <laughs> it's always an interesting conversation. So I've been wanting to share your knowledge, your business acumen with everyone here on the Hawaii Verse podcast. So before we get into everything, I got to know, where are you from, where are you grad, and what was it like growing up? I'm originally from Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Uh, grew up between Northern Virginia, Maryland, and actually the city of Washington, D.C. Uh, and if I were to look back you know, 30 years, 40 years ago, I don't know if I would have, I would have thought I'm in, I would end up in Hawaii, but Mm -hmm. Hawaii definitely has my heart. So what was it like growing up in the DC area? You know, my, my father and my family were, you know, what I would call uh, tier one or major entrepreneurs there. They were commercial, they were in commercial real estate, Uh, you know, grew up, I would say upper middle class and got to see everything from racism to HIV to, mm. you know, everything from homelessness and homosexuality to, you know, being in the ranks of going to school with uh, children of senators and governors. I actually mm. went to Bishop O'Connell in Arlington, Virginia, so sort of saw it all. Uh, the mayor of D.C. at that time was actually caught smoking crack with two prostitutes. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I would say that I'm very happy I grew up in D.C. It, it made me who I am today and also didn't segment me from what I think the generation has become today where I uh, have many friends that are black, many friends that are Muslim, many friends that are gay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, has made me the person that I am. I think that's why Hawaii works for me. It's a a lot of different people here. I was going to say, did the diversity over there kind of prepare you for the diversity over here? Is that what kind of drew you to Hawaii? It did. I felt definitely very, uh, what I would call, not in the right place living in California. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lived between uh, Silicon Valley and Los Angeles. Uh, Yeah, it just didn't work for me. Hmm. So how did you end up in California? So after graduating, what did you do? So after I graduated, I started really getting into the techno rave scene, uh, promoted and marketed a lot of nightclubs and things. And unfortunately, with being involved in the rave and techno scene, there's always going to be this element of drug use and alcohol use. And uh, it didn't, it wasn't something that I saw that I could do longitudinally. 
Um, it was great for what it was at the age of 17 or 18, mm -hmm. but at that time, my family was coming out of somewhat of a financial crisis, and I was actually looking to see, you know, where I was going next, you know, after the world of nightlife. And my family, you know, was living between Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the age of about 19, 20 years old, I was heading to L.A. Well, wow. and what, so what was your dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? I mean, I think everybody thought I was going to be an international lawyer. I think what? that's uh, what my dad thought as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up in a family that did commercial real estate and import export, uh, a usual Thanksgiving, as Thanksgiving is tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, would be talking about business and talking mm -hmm. about lawyers and talking about suing each other. So <laughs> that's a normal Thanksgiving dinner. That's a that's a normal <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner in the Nixad house household. I uh, uh, grew up with an incredible family that loved and supported me and mm -hmm. uh, believed in my crazy dreams. Yeah. And uh, here I am today. And are they from the D.C. area? They are. So mm -hmm. my family immigrated here in the 70s from Iran. Mm -hmm. So what was what was called Persia. Yeah. Uh, our background is we're Persian Jewish. So they left because of the revolution and we're doing business pretty consistently between Washington DC and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So in that in that area because it's pretty diverse um, being a minority was that ever a problem or was it pretty accepted? I mean I don't think being a minority is ever totally accepted I think mm -hmm. as a human error and flaw we comment on people uh, I think we all do this I think mm -hmm. we all go back to bad tendencies. And I think that I grew up in an era where people were still trying to understand people from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So, you know, was I called names growing up and people couldn't understand you're a, you're a terrorist and a Jew? And so it was- uh, What a combo, yeah, yeah that it's, time. It's, it's, I mean, I think that uh, when I look at today's society, we're as ignorant as we ever have been, mm -hmm. but hopefully we're becoming more conscious as well. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's like this uh, roller coaster ride, right? Where it's like gets bad, and we're kind of getting good. We start to understand each other, and then we go right back down. You know, that's kind of how like the the pandemic was, right? Where it's like all this progress we, we made trying to come together and everything, and it's like oh divisiveness. Oh, and now maybe hopefully we're on a, an upswing. But I feel like that's just like a constant cycle. Yeah, definitely. I mean, mm -hmm. the cycle as humans, hopefully we're evolving to be better people. Mm -hmm. And I believe that because I see my children and I see a lot of what I would call the old paradigm evolving. Mm -hmm. But it's it's definitely an oxymoron sometimes when you think see like COVID and things that happen, you know, with the whole George Floyd situation and yeah, it's very sad. I, you know, I'm not afraid to say this. I was jumped when I was 15 years old by about 11 people and I got the shit beat out of me. Wow. So I've been on the other side of racial tension mm -hmm. and uh, it's not always simple. Yeah. How do you, like, how do you move forward from that, from that situation? Not be, you know, uh, not, not ignorant, but, you know, like, not ha live with that trauma it's, and just be like triggered every time you see like I, you know, I'm, something I, like that. You know, I would tell you at 46 years old, and I've been saying this a lot recently, I'm finally uh, very, I, I finally I'm okay with myself. Like I'm mm -hmm. authentic. Like one of the things I appreciate about you and mm -hmm. JC and you know, a lot of the people that I've met in Hawaii is, uh, you guys have a good emotional intelligence. You grew up uh, on this beautiful land, this magical island. And I think this is what I'm so attracted to. And, you know, as much as I dabbled in psychedelics and other products when I was younger, um, you know, some of my first really spiritual experiences happened in Kayana Point. I mm -hmm. know I've spoken to you about that. Yeah. Uh, I would probably say that you know, Cayenne Point for some reason has uh, had a very, has had a, a role in getting me to where I am today. And mm -hmm. the first time I hiked Cayenne Point was 20 plus years ago. 
And today I would say that it's uh, Hawaii has made me who I am, where I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. That that seems to happen a lot where it's um, people come here and they tend to find themselves or they have this sort of spiritual connection to the land. I mean, even uh, people would like to go to the big island, you know, mm -hmm. there's like that whole community in Kalapana. Um, be before we get into like all, you know, like the psychedelic stuff, because I'm super interested in your yeah. story with that and um, what, what you're doing with your business and surrounding uh, mental health. Um, how, so how did you end up getting into like the business we're going from, you know, the, the rave scene? I think when you grow up with a family of entrepreneurs, it's, it's hard you not know, to. It's, it's in your blood. It's mm -hmm. interesting because uh, most of my family are, are actually like my, my brother and my mom and a lot of my family members are doctors. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, but I think that even as a doctor, I would say that 99% of my family have an involvement in developing real estate. And they're entrepreneurs. I have a lot of family members that are actually in the cannabis business as well. Um, it just came to me. I mean, the first the first investments I ever made were uh, booking DJs to come to mm -hmm. the United States from Europe and learning how to make money by doing digital marketing and putting flyers on cars. So. I just had it in me, and I think probably by the age of 20-something, I was, you know, uh, I had invested in a handful of companies, so it, it was in my blood. Yeah. What was your first job? My first job was shoveling snow, <laughs> nice. and, and it was for uh, my neighbor, Thurgood Marshall, mm. so uh, the Supreme Court Justice. Oh, wow. Yeah, kind of, kind of crazy that he was our next-door neighbor, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, m that was my first job starting at around nine years old. Oh, okay. Wow, nine years old. Yeah. Dang, so you, you just had that work ethic instilled in you from an early I, age. The minute it snowed, I was out there shoveling snow, and uh, yeah. I think I charged like, you know, $50 a pop. $50 <laughs> and nine years? <laughs> that, that's a lot of money. Uh, they were big driveways. Yeah, wow. <laughs> So, did you have help or you did it all on your I own? I did it all on my own. And I remember uh, Thurgood Marshall's wife would always, you know, give me that 50 bucks after I was Whoa. done. And um, yeah, I think when I look back and I, I think about, you know, how I was raised and the people, it's all about like interactions and frequency of energy mm -hmm. where I think it's made me who I am today. And mm -hmm. I, I love that. I love how diversified, you know, our company is and the people we interact with. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you know, one of your very good friends works for us, JC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's somebody that I go to for a lot of major decisions. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So when you were doing your your DJing and booking, uh, booking DJs yeah. to, to play at clubs here, uh, were you making a, a lot of good money doing that or how come you stopped? I was making a lot of money. Mm. So I stopped because I knew that uh, it was dangerous. Uh, obviously in the rave scene, there are a lot of schedule one illegal drugs that circulate through those, you know, it, it happens today. It mm -hmm. happens everywhere. Yeah. And I think that for me, it's not something that I, I wanted to be involved with. I'm a person that uh, does everything, as you would say, pono. For mm -hmm. me, everything, it's by the letter of the law. I had seen people in the rave scene go to jail, and it, it just wasn't something that I was willing to risk my life for. Mm -hmm. So I it was like a beginning to the end. I did it for mm. two years. I did really, really well. I got involved with like what I would say tier one DJs and we threw, you know, like 10,000 person raves plus, 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 mm -hmm. and it was great. And then um, I sort of came to California and uh, was like, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to, you know, own some real estate, do angel investing, own some businesses. And mm -hmm. that's what I did. Yeah. So angel investing is like uh, when you, you invest in startups. Well, can you explain that to us? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So angel investing definitely has shifted a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that when I started angel investing, and I think one of the first deals I did was investing in a uh, 
a DVD or a, a, a VHS mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, somebody, one of my friends was uh, making a movie and I think I put $5,000 into the deal. Um, I would say that 26 years later, I'm still refining my angel mm -hmm. investing. So I think a lot of people get into this business because they think it's cool and fun. And I would say, uh, giving no financial advice on this podcast, but I would say the reason I did angel investing is because I wanted to support my friends mm -hmm. and people that I met. Um, and I think it's the same reason I do it today. I mm -hmm. would say that when you're investing, that's it's like icing on top in terms of running and operating your your business and mm -hmm. what we did is we have a holding company that now probably has 50 75 plus investments and we operate uh, our main business which is you know strategically partnering and and building businesses around crowdfunding and investor relations and other things. And yeah, we, we wanted to build something that was an ethos of great companies. And, and that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And that's Orthogonal Thinker. It is, yes. Yeah. So okay. orthog Orthogonal Thinker uh, started out as my personal angel investing fund, what I would call my 2.0 of angel investing, mm -hmm. which started in like 2009. Mm -hmm. And the ethos of, of that, which is called Rainmaker Satsang, was the idea of investing in people because of a frequency of energy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my 1996 till 2008, it was about making money, and mm. it wasn't any consciousness of what I invested in. Mm, it was just your hustle phase. I think you're young mm, yeah. and, and you want to, I invested in everything. <laughs> I mean, I invested in real estate, nightlife, uh, uh, all types of industries, technology. And uh, when I look back at it and I look at the people I met, I, I, I said to myself one day, I said, yeah, it was great. Uh, hung out in a lot of Ferraris and Rolls Royces, but that kind of did nothing for me. Yeah, I love when we talked, when we went on, on um, JC's boat um, out in North Shore, yeah. went to um, Hale, uh, Waimea Bay, yep. and I was, I was talking to you about just uh, life, and then I think we, we talked about, um, like, money came up, and he said, the, the only difference between, um, or there's no difference between me and anyone else, because, like, everyone has the same problems. Always. Right? Yeah, that... that it's really cool to hear that from somebody who's very successful and you know has has been successful financially because a lot of people think like oh money will make me happy right M money is a very money is a frequency of energy it's what my co-founder and jace jason and i talk about all the time um i think it's how you use it it's how you i'll give you an idea today uh I sent flowers to two really important people in my life that have supported me. Um, one being my mother and then someone else that's, you know, been involved with my journey. And I think that I've learned how to use the money to do s specific and special things for people. And knowing that uh, I see a lot of greed when it comes to money and a lot of, I you know, I just see a lot of things with money that I don't like. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people that connect to people because of like private jets and cars and stuff. And listen, I love all those things. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's great. It's, it's great to fly private, but um, you know, where I am today, it's about helping as many people as I can. And uh, that's, that's, that's who we are as an organization. Mm -hmm. I think overall orthogonal thinker now is, is about stewarding, you know, when I look at the organization, which is, you know, if you really go back to 2009, our organization now is, you know, it's, it's, an, it's, it's what I would say going into its teenage years. Mm. And it needs to, uh, it needs to be doing good things and stewarding its capital. And, 
yeah, I, I, I look at orthogonal today as something that has also, my kids were a big part of orthogonal. Mm -hmm. And I, you know my children, you've hung out with them. Yeah, and uh, Yeah, me and your yeah. son, we got, had some bro talks <laughs> exactly. right on the beach. <laughs> They're on their way here right I, yeah, now. Yeah, we can't, we can't tell you what we talked about. It's just, you know, bro code. Yeah, so <laughs> listen, my kids were raised on the island of Maui and... Mm -hmm. Uh, in a weird way, orthogonal thinker and my kids, it's been, I've always looked to them for the answers mm -hmm. when I've been building this company. And there's been so many people involved in this company. I've, I've lost very good friends. Mm -hmm. It's been emotional. Um, there are people that I miss today, but at the end of the day, that that's life. It's a journey. And today, what I would tell you is like, I love this company. I love what we've built. I love that we can impact. I love that uh, this company is going to be here mm -hmm. when I'm not here. And that, that was a big deal for me. Yeah. Well, I, when I first met you, I, I, I really loved your heart. And we know we talked about the word <laughs> porno, right? Righteousness. And um, it was just such a crazy coincidence, you Your know, serendipitous, name? which is my middle name yeah. is Kupono. Yeah. And we were just talking about that. And, um, you know, just knowing you over the last couple of months, it seems like, you know, you really want to do right, you know, for yourself and for our community, for your kids. And I, I feel like a lot of people that I meet or see, especially with like bigger businesses, nonprofits, people that move here, um, it almost seems like they're just trying to take advantage of what Hawaii has to offer. But for you, I feel like you you want to elevate this place. You want to, you want to, you want to kind of give, um, make make what we already have better instead of just changing it you know i i feel like like some of our conversations you've had about like homelessness houselessness and stuff that you see you're just like well i, I want to help people i want to give people jobs i want to you know do what i can to contribute to this this place we call hawaii because a lot of people don't really come here with that mindset i do everything that i can um to empower, to, to spend money uh, on local entrepreneurs. Um, I'm not here to toot my own horn. There are people that I've met on this journey like Alec McBarnett who owns Maui Oil and probably one of the top businessmen on these islands that gives back more than anybody that I know. But I have definitely met people like Alec and the Merriman family and other people where I understand the value and it's not only value, I understand the mana of Hawaii. It's, there's something about this place and I have, I've been to like 70 other countries in the last 46 years of my life mm. and I've never encountered I've never encountered what I've felt here, but at the same, at, a, at the same point, when I see people put cigarettes into the sand, or I see the homelessness in Ala Moana Park, I know I can do more. And a lot of people know that I, I went to Miami for a year to work on my businesses while Hawaii was shut down. And I was excited to come back to Hawaii. Before I came back, I changed all my payroll tax to Hawaii because I want to pay my taxes here. And I would say that like for any, I meet tons of very wealthy people that are, let's say your millionaires and billionaires that I, you know, that I run into at different places that tell me how they don't file their taxes here and they are trying to skirt the law, it really upsets me because it's like the police department, the fire department, all of these local organizations need to be supported. Mm -hmm. And when you don't pay your taxes, people like teachers and other people don't get paid. So I think my one message is like, if you don't want to give charity and you don't want to give food to the homeless and you don't want to support people on this island, at least if you're going to live here, pay local taxes mm -hmm. at, at the most simplest level. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's one way to contribute to our community. I, I, I think yeah. it's, it's, it's living in Pono. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you, so tell us about your history um, living here in Hawaii. Cause you, so you've been back and forth here for 
20 plus years? Yeah, I've been back and forth here from 20 plus years. Uh, when did I, when was my first trip? So my first trip that I came to Hawaii was going to Maui uh, in my really early 20s. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually got on my first, you know, my first time I surfed was at the Kihei Cove mm. and, uh, was an amazing experience. Didn't think, you know, much of it in terms of God, it's Hawaii, it's close to California. And then it was probably like 2004, 2005. I had met a shaman in Los Angeles that had been living in Haleiwa. Mm. And he, him and I started coming back and forth to Hawaii and sort of, I was already into spirituality and I had already like gone down that road of like studying different gurus and stuff. But I think 04, 05 uh, was my time where I would, I was coming really consistently back and forth. So, mm -hmm. you know, somewhat living b back and forth between L LA and Oahu. And uh, actually got married at Turtle Bay. Um, still very good friends with my ex-wife, which we have these two amazing kids. And sort of my journey started. I think it was like 05, 06 um, was really when it was more of a, Hawaii was my home. Mm -hmm. And then 2011, uh, my co-founder Jason told me he was working on this project called Lumeria uh, on Maui. And uh, from Oahu, we shifted our energy to Maui and uh, got involved with Lumeria and sort of uh, had my first son, Dorian, and said, okay, if I'm gonna have children, I want them to live in on the island, you know, on one of the islands, and uh, you know, Maui became home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before coming to Hawaii, did, were you aware of all all the the what is it, like the perception that people had here have here of outsiders, you know, coming coming to Hawaii and like moving here? And how, not, how people not, think not of like how is, you know? No, not totally. Yeah. I mean, all the islands are different. I mean, mm -hmm. so when I lived, when I was living in Oahu at that time, I was living in the North Shore. Um, so we were living uh, in a neighborhood across our, where Velzy land is. And I, I think that I'm trying to use the right words, but... I think by that time, uh, there was a level of even the North Shore not not being local. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the the locals lived more towards Cayenne Point, or they lived on other sides of the island. So, yes, I I I I personally got my. Uh, that's who I am as a person. I met a lot of locals because I wanted to understand this island mm -hmm. and I went to Kayana Point. I actually at some point was living in Kayana Point mm -hmm. in my car trying to understand, you know, where I was and to find myself. So I, I think it really depends on what environment you want to have in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can have a what I would call uh pipeline Red Bull experience or what I would call a Kahala experience <laughs> or, 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 or you can Kahala have experience. like uh, the people that are living in the park at Ala Moana Park and people that live in Waianae or you know people that live in you know near Kayana Point. I mean truly what and and you know I'm trying to avoid certain topics but I love Thanksgiving, but I'm not a big fan of Thanksgiving. Mm. I, I don't celebrate anything that has to do with people taking land from one another or stealing from one another. Mm. That's the energy I get from Thanksgiving. But I do love the idea of coming together. I, I love eating a turkey mm -hmm. with gravy. But yeah, I think in the, let's say, 20 years that I've been here, it saddened me to watch and again, I'm going to watch what I say, <laughs> but organizations and people come here. I was in a local grocery store yesterday that's owned by a billionaire. 
and they were talking to me about how part-time employees don't get health insurance. Mm. And I think that what a, what a beautiful island. These billionaires want to come in. They want to buy Maui and Lanai. And, you know, there were people here before you that actually are from these islands. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like, I appreciate giving, like, $100 million or $50 million as charity so you can make a statement. But it's more than that. And I think for me, and again, not talking about anybody else, uh, I I do all of my commerce and giving back on the islands here, mm-hmm. specifically Oahu and Maui. Yeah, and you go to the farmers market a lot. I know you. We spend a lot of money. We lot of money We we spend a lot of money. We support everybody. We make sure to buy from mm-hmm. everybody. And yeah, I mean, I would probably say to you that I I currently advise ten or twenty companies on the Hawaiian islands that come to us for help and mm-hmm. legal, you know, legal advisory work. And, you know, we don't charge anybody. We do everything we can to help mm-hmm. people. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Um, just wanted to make a comment on the Thanksgiving uh, thing that you said. I, I listened in a, um, to a podcast recently, a couple of days ago, saying um, when they said that they looked into like the history of Thanksgiving. Yeah. And they said it, it was it's almost like this false story because abraham lincoln i think that's the president at that time Mm -hmm. he made that story up of the pilgrims and um the the native americans having uh, a feast together because it was a time um during the civil war where everything was very divisive right so he's he made up that story to bring people together to be like hey let's live in unity like these people you know i you know going back to like psychedelics and you know I don't want to get into religious things or political things, but you got to remember, you know, we have a term in Hawaii called coconut wireless. <laughs> and I think that even with history and religion and other things, there's a level of coconut mm-hmm. wireless. What I would tell you is I respect everybody and anyone that has specific beliefs. Um, I was on Twitter spaces the other day with a few thousand people. We were discussing, you know, freedom of speech and everything else. My big thing is just don't hurt other people. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I know I've gotten to know you and gotten to know you a lot through JC. And I know you are a very neutral person that uh, gives a lot of love and kindness to people. And I think that that's what we need right now. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what psychedelics are all about. That's what this new consciousness era of spirituality is, is like, we don't need to bully people. We don't need to be calling people bad names. We don't need to hurt people. We're not always going to agree. There, there are people that don't like me in Hawaii. There are people that don't like me globally, and that's okay. They don't like what I stand for. But I think when you take things to a level where you use derogatory words and statements, like I read something on Twitter the other day. It was horrible. It was talking about raping women are talking about like lynching Jews wow. I, and I'm just like holy shit uh, that's the stuff that and, and there's a, there's you know there's far worse out there but that's the stuff that hopefully as a society like why why has somebody gotten to a certain place where they feel like that and you know that's what saddens me about Hawaii and I know we're going in circles is like this is such a great place like let's steward it into like everybody talks about like global warming and the world deteriorating and everything bad i i'm actually a person that's like i believe we can evolve things to be better Mm -hmm. i believe that yeah so how how do you think we can become better as a society just I'm going to give you like the most simplest thing in the world Mm -hmm. that I tell my children. Uh, You know, my children a long time ago, I think found a hundred dollar bill in the grocery store somewhere. And I said to, you know, Dorian and, you know, they obviously as kids, they have a, these days with technology, they have this idea of money. And I was like, you know what? 
somebody lost that and you don't know if like that's their that's their only money they have to mm -hmm. buy groceries or something i think as a society like the simplest form of like right or wrong um you know jc and i always you know we barbecue a lot at alamana park and we always make sure that when we're done we give away all the food so it's not wasted i think when you think about things like I, I saw this the other day, somebody had hurt themselves surfing or something and nobody was helping them in the water. And this is what I always appreciated about JC. Like JC will always help everyone yeah. no matter what. And I think that's, you know, why I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I always look up to him and I always ask his advice, but I, I always say to JC, aren't you worried, you know, somebody's going to sue you or something else? You know, that's what everybody's mindset is. And it's like, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that's where we are as a society. It's like, let's destroy everybody. Let's sue everybody. Let's, mm -hmm. And however these habit loops have been formed, we need to shift that perspective. And I, I think that as a society we are very interconnected but we're also a very hyper local society where we have to take care of our where we live mm -hmm. and i think it's important that we come together on these islands yeah no, I, I totally agree. I hope I'm not talking too much. Oh, no. This, this is the <laughs> point of the podcast is for people to talk too much. Yeah. That's why we, we have long form conversations. Sure. Yes. And I, I, I'm a good listener. I love listening to people talk and share their opinions and thoughts about, you know, their lives and especially the Hawaiian Islands. I, I feel like there's so much perspective that you can get from this having these conversations with people from all walks of life, you know, locals here. You know, locals who are Hawaiian, locals who are not Hawaiian, locals who have moved here and made this place their homes. Like there, there's so much perspective to be gained. And just listening to, to people have these conversations, having this conver these conversations on your own, it opens up your mind and your heart and makes you more empathetic, yeah. you know, towards everyone else. Even, even yourself, it helps you understand yourself better, too, when you hear other people who you might relate to. Yeah. yeah so that that's what I, I love about this um but so let's get into psychedelics right before we get into our um our um, patreon questions today sure um so what what is your journey with that and how did you um like fall into that is it through um when you met that that shaman you said and no i mean my my journey with psychedelics really started uh you know in my teenage years experimenting with magic mushrooms and ecstasy i mean i grew up in washington dc uh mm -hmm. there was you know i i grew up at the start of the rave scene and uh, I was diagnosed at an early age of, you know, ADD, ADHD, slash Asperger's, uh, was prescribed Ritalin by the fifth grade, uh, mm -hmm. was actually snorting Ritalin in the fifth grade with one of my good friends as he was also diagnosed with Asperger's and uh, had always been self-medicating and uh, you know, experimented with a lot of these products uh, when I was younger. And what's interesting is as I got older, these products uh, actually became more impure. Mm -hmm. And if you look at today, the Hawaiian Islands definitely have a huge issue with like fentanyl and crystal meth uh, that I just, uh, I think I've always just, you know, because I've used these products personally for my own what I would call mental stability, you know, having Asperger's, I look at it as something that is uh, a positive. Mm -hmm. I see it in my children as well, because I can see that they have forms of Asperger's too. And I needed to make sure that at the age, when they come into an age where they want to experiment with drugs and alcohol and other things, that there were products that were available that were not at a pharmaceutical level addictive and depleting. So mm -hmm. by the age of 20 years old, I had probably been on a few dozen different prescriptions from Lexapro to being on 
a hundred milligrams of Adderall a day. Oh. Um, and you know, again, Adderall for me is a methamphetamine and, uh, yeah, I understand that there will be a day because I see it in my kids now at 9 and 11. They, they want to drink coffee. Lily, you know, wants to know what alcohol tastes like. <laughs> they have questions about cannabis and other things. So I want to make sure that, you know, when they're of the legal age, whether that's 18 or 21, they have access to clean non-synthetic empathiceuticals, I call it, are products that create empathy that empower mm. themselves. And I think that at the end of the day, coffee is a drug, sugar is a drug, nicotine is a drug. Uh, anything that you're self-medicating with to find a level of peace in your life is a drug hmm. and i want to make sure that whatever that drug is or medicine it's of the highest quality with the least amount of side effects and i've probably done now over a hundred podcasts in the past regarding asperger's and adderall and i would tell you at 46 years old i'm still dealing with uh the side effects of adderall and uh, I'm not the only one. Uh, our mutual friend also mm -hmm. deals with it as well. That's how we connected. Mm. And I would say that uh, most people that I've talked to that have been on Adderall or Lexapro or Xanax or Ritalin have all experienced side effects 10 or 20 years later. Whoa. So, well, so what are the side effects of of doing it. When's the last time you you've So taken the last Adderall? time I took Adderall was probably in my early 20s, probably mm -hmm. 23. Um, I mean, I still have a pretty bad shakiness to my hand. You know, my hand mm -hmm. can't stay still. Um, issues with my digestive system and my microbiome. Uh, anxiety. Uh, you know, there's... I mean, read the read the label. Adderall mm. gives you all the side effects. Uh, the my last day that I did Adderall, and this doesn't sound great. I had uh, taken a hundred milligrams, and I actually had uh, defecated on myself. Whoa. And I said to myself, uh, "This isn't a product I ever want anybody that I know to take." I don't ever want anybody to be exposed to this. And the fact that Adderall is a $40 billion company is, is shocking. So if it's so bad or the, there's these side effects, how are they allowed to constantly give it out so easily? You know, I don't want to, I mean, I'm going to say this in the best way possible. I don't want to get sued by anybody, <laughs> but I think like, you know, Go to your local pharmacy or grocery store. Mm -hmm. uh, there are products that are publicly traded companies that, uh, you know, give cancer to people. Mm -hmm. They cause diabetes. They hurt people. And I think that that is part of my sadness of Hawaii. And again, we're going full circle is that I see how expensive it is to live here. I see all this land here. Not sure why there are not farms being subsidized. And I can tell you that personally for my organization and my group, we are going to reinvest and deploy a lot of financing into those categories mm -hmm. because uh, people you know, GMO foods and synthetic meats, they're not going to do anything for you. I think that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Or I know it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've seen it for how long, right? And then it's, it's like to move forward, we almost have to look backwards to like how the native Hawaiians used to live. You know, they, they had the ahupua'a system. They farmed their own food. Everything was so clean and pure. They had one of the best diets in the world. I don't, I don't know how much you know about the native Hawaiian diet. Yep. Um, there, there's this book I read called The Why and I Diet. And they were, they basically, they just put a bunch of people um, who were having health issues or overweight on 
a strictly native Hawaiian diet. And over the course of, I don't know, what was it, two weeks, they all lost a bunch of weight. Um, high, uh, their blood pressure went down, cholesterol went down. Some people had diabetes. They didn't even have to take their insulin anymore. So it, it's kind of crazy how um, everything is so, like, synthetic these days. And I'm, we have I'm, sugars in everything. I'm going to put it yeah. out there, and I'm just going to say it. Yes, if, please if, do. If, if anybody wants to contact us, first of all, I'm easily accessible on social platforms. But if you have a great idea and, you know, you want to, you have a crazy idea to feed these islands through agriculture or you have an idea with solar or anything to shift the perspective and to empower the Hawaiian pop population or people living here, we're happy to get involved and mm -hmm. fund, you know, any startup that wants to get involved. And uh, yeah, we're committed to that. We've always done that. Um, it's sometimes hard to do in Hawaii because a lot of people uh, don't have what I would say the startup business mm -hmm. acumen. But I personally am willing to give my time, energy, resources and money mm -hmm. to empower any organization that wants to empower these islands. Yeah. He means it, too. So I do hit him up. <laughs> I, I, I it do. seems like we're always just like a step behind sometimes. Yeah. Unlike tech and. Maybe so that's it. Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe that's the beauty of living on these islands. I mean, uh, I will tell you, you know, our holding company has a lot of positions in cryptocurrency and space and other things. And I was sort of saying to myself the other day, I think maybe it was a good thing that uh, people from Hawaii weren't exposed to crypto because it wasn't legal. Mm. Uh, you know, a lot of platforms were not allowed to, I mean, most platforms were not allowed to operate legally in the Hawaiian Islands. So again, there's something beautiful about having that. I, I appreciate the conservative conservatism in Hawaii. Sometimes I get mm -hmm. a little crazy because, mm -hmm. you know, cannabis isn't, you know, fully legal here, but I get it. Mm -hmm. And I and I have that debate with a lot of people. It's it's why my kids are being raised on Maui. I don't want them exposed to everything. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Wow. Okay, so let's get into Patreon questions real yeah, quick, and then on. we'll jump back. I have to everything. join Patreon myself. Remind <laughs> me that. All right. Uh, so Noi, this comes from Noi, um, N O I. Do you feel like you've been exposed to enough locals to understand the Hawaii lifestyle? So I think you can, uh, you know, you could probably also answer that question. I've now known JC for probably five or six years. Mm -hmm. uh, JC and I are together almost every day. Yeah. Uh, so I think from that point of view, you know, JC was uh, born on these islands. Uh, ex, yeah, ex-professional surfer, childhood mm -hmm. friend of, yeah. of yours. Um, yeah, I do. I think... Uh, for the most part, uh, living in the North Shore of Oahu, spending a lot of time in Kayana Point, met a lot of locals there. Uh, in Maui, I lived in Haiku, spent a lot of time all over Haiku and Paia. Um, yeah, I, I think like that idea of locals, everybody has a story. And I think at a certain point, like, what is local at, at, at like how much time do you have to spend here mm -hmm. i think that i've spent time with people that have had, that are i would say second or third or fourth generation mm -hmm. and for me hawaii and again i, I don't you know i don't want to get in trouble with any local people <laughs> it, hawaii is is an energy it's an energy it's like when somebody converts to judaism uh, for me, I, I feel like, first of all, I'm not from Hawaii, but I think that I have Hawaii inside of me. Mm -hmm. I feel like Hawaii is, a, is an energy, it's a frequency. I look at everything in terms of like atomic mass or what is the frequency of Hawaii? I mean, mm -hmm. more than ever, 
I when I think of Hawaii, I think of you, Kamaka. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. It's like a fungus; it just grows on you. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love that answer. Yeah. Okay. Do you think I get enough exposure from JC? I think. I mean, <laughs> between him and I, I think that that's a good enough. And then all his friends yeah. and you know just comma comma everybody yeah yeah those are those are pretty yeah. local boys. <laughs> all right, Ella Jane wants to know where do you think you'd be if you chose a different career path? I don't really think about that. I mean, my career path is is based on purpose. Uh, my purpose is, you know, there's a word in Sanskrit called dharma. It's living of purpose. My purpose is to help people. Mm-hmm. My purpose is to empower people and. Thankfully, my family exposed me to money at an early age. They were entrepreneurs, so I've used that to empower my own purpose of helping people. Awesome. Love that. Okay, uh, next question comes from Mineko. What do you think is the biggest problem Hawaii faces and how would you fix it? It's a very sensitive subject. My My what the part of hawaii that upsets me the most is that the hawaii that i came to know 20 plus years ago or when i first got here in 1996 97 is very different than it is today where uh nature the nature has changed it shifted uh i'm okay with it with development and it getting busy, that's that's normal, especially as inflation and cost of living rises. Um, yeah, it. I want to make sure that Hawaiian people are in Hawaii, and I will. You know, I'm sure I'm going to get a, a lot of nasty messages from people, but I'm willing to pay a tax that goes back to people that are from Hawaii. I think when you make a certain amount of money, uh, you have to do these types of things. I'm, I make good money. There are a lot of people that are a lot wealthier than I am, like Larry Ellison and Jeff Bezos and Oprah and Jim Carrey and Owen Wilson and many people that I've met that it should be no issue for them to pay a percentage of their money to a place that they spend time in. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's like a kuleana responsibility? They oh, absolutely. If you, if you told me that I had to pay, you know, whatever I had to pay to live here to make sure, if I had to sponsor somebody to live and go to school, I would do it. I mean, it's, this, is, this is where this idea of like, I, I see all these private planes, yachts, uh, you know, Hawaii has Lamborghinis, Ferraris. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, maybe uh, you 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 don't have an extra Chanel purse, and you like, you know. Yeah, yeah. So and, you gotta and, make some sacrifices yeah, to, to listen, enjoy this. Li- listen, <laughs> I I I can tell you personally for myself and JC and I have been talking about it. I'm about to move, so I can make sure that. I don't lose sight of who I am Mm -hmm. and I make sure that I still am getting the mana and the energy of why I moved here originally. Yeah. I want to implement this, implement this new Kamaka tax here on the podcast is that (laughs) if you make over a certain amount of money, you have to buy me an uncle's ice cream sandwich from a food land or whole foods or wherever you can get uncle's ice cream sandwich. And you have to give it to me every single time Done. you pay your taxes. Done. Okay. That's all I ask for. <laughs> Done. <laughs> all right. Next question comes from yo underscore S far. This person wants to know, how did you spend your first million? Uh, probably the worst way possible. <laughs> uh, I probably spent my first million buying a, a nice car, a nice house, uh, not doing enough for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually interesting. I don't own any personal real estate. I'm an investor in real estate companies, but uh, yeah, have again, who I was, what I would say pre-2009 is very different than who I am in coming into 2023. Mm-hmm. Well, what was that catalyst in your life that just changed everything? 
the kind of that moment in life where I feel like a lot of us we go through life and we have different moments that really impact our lives like the, it's like it's like that life changing moment like for me it was the Peace Corps or you know studying abroad stuff like that um, I think the more that I started there was one person that I ran into very early on his his readings were Professor Feynman and he was a physicist in the 50s and I think like the more I started like reading his quotes and understanding like everything is connected somehow we're all like we all have a frequency or a currency you know Jason my co-founder who's a lawyer always says everybody has a currency and I really started I met him also which was a big shift we haven't talked about him a lot but um, probably one of the most kindest generous people I've ever met but I wanted my currency to not be defined on the basis of money and wealth I wanted my currency to be defined as in terms of how many people I helped mm -hmm. and like like doing like the difference between right or wrong and I think it just comes full circle back to being a child and having this like innocence of not wanting to hurt people like I've had so many opportunities to invest in like porn and adult entertainment and stuff like that and I've I've always stayed away from mm -hmm. it and I probably could have made millions or billions of dollars I think that you just I have a nine-year-old daughter mm -hmm. I don't you know I and yeah you you need to I I think a lot of people don't uh fully connect with the fact that what they do or or what whatever they're involved with it has like a butterfly mm -hmm. effect there's a lot of movies right now yeah. ab about this but everything is connected in some capacity i've been watching uh these these movies on apple tv it's it's interesting a lot of the shows on apple tv right now like mosquito coast and there's a number of other movies or shows that are about this idea like one thing affects another person affects another person so i believe I, that yeah i need to make sure like whoever i touch an effect like i'm not hurting anybody down the chain mm -hmm. that's awesome i mean it's good to be aware of that and it's it's so simple just in you know not not be an a-hole you know not not be can i mean can to i people. can i uh so I have to do this. Yes, so please. my co-founder and somebody that I've known for over 20 years, you know, best friend, confidant, he has a saying for our company, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. And I think You've said that, that before. Yeah, I think that that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. It's like, if you're going to cheat or you're going to steal or you're going to cheat on your wife, that's who... That's how you conduct your life. And I haven't always been perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, telling, I'm telling you this because I've, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. I just turned 46. Mm -hmm. I'm just now coming to a point in my life where I'm like, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm an adult. Like I'm actually <laughs> conducting. <finally made> yeah, <laughs> I'm conducting yeah. myself well. That's so real. I mean, to hear that from somebody like, 46 you know we holy we, we think you know <laughs> when when you go off to college you know you turn 18 i'm an adult and then you realize okay you're finishing college okay i gotta get a new a real job now i'm an adult an adult now this is the real world and then you you know you get to the next phase of your life you're like i'm an adult this is the real world and it's like, it's like I, w I would have to say <laughs> this is like and i just have to do it because i know a lot of people are going to watch this mm -hmm. If I've hurt somebody or done anything bad to somebody, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, please forgive me because I've forgiven other people and I don't want to hurt anybody. And this journey is hard for all of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, empathy. Mm -hmm. my, my big thing is empathy these days. Yes, it should be for everybody. And I think it's hard, it's hard to gain empathy if you just stay stagnant. If you don't get outside of your comfort zone, you don't travel, you don't meet other people, you don't look at yourself in the mirror and be like, 
you gotta make some changes or you gotta understand better or you have to reflect a little bit more and, and i give a hard time to the mm-hmm. people that i like the most mm-hmm. just like you kamaka yeah i give you a hard time but, but i but i appreciate that because you know but that the, just means i care yeah exactly it shows that you care because you don't want to just be around agreeable people the, your whole life you know and then you're just gonna you're gonna live in this bubble and you're not gonna really understand how things truly work and I know the people that have given me tough love or have mm-hmm. given me a hard time. I know they've cared about me. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was just talking um, to one of our other podcast guests a couple episodes ago about how sometimes we're nicer to strangers than we are the people that are closest to us. But it's more so that you're just a lot more honest with the people you're close with. You are. And yeah. then you're living in Hawaii. It's yeah. a very smaller population. Mm-hmm. Like living on Maui, there's 100,000 people. So yeah. everybody, you're going to run into your ex-wife or ex-girlfriend <laughs> at Target all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is here. Yeah, Especially totally. if you live on like some somewhere like Molokai <laughs> or like Kauai, even smaller than this island. It's like... Everybody knows. Everybody showed up to the Chick Fil A yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, <the laughs> grand, grand opening. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a it was like a high school reunion. I, I bet it for was people. great. I mean, everybody would. <laughs> it was it was probably like a five year, ten year, twenty, twenty five, thirty, that, forty but, year but, reunion but, over but, there. But you, but you know what? That's what I love about Hawaii. I was in. I've you know obviously gone to Chick Fil A a number of times, and like people come together. It was like a whole outing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like. Chick-fil-A, bringing people together yeah. since 2022 here in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have one more question and then yeah. um, we'll go on. Um, Slater Davies wants to know, did you ever have a bad trip? Yeah, I have had bad trips. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think, you know, that's, that's part of the good and bad of psychedelics. And, you know, what is good and what's bad and, you know, what's, what's suffering. I psychedelics are not supposed to be fun and easy psychedelics are about looking in the mirror and dealing with your shit and uh i do that every morning i get up and i look at the mirror and i'm like david get it to fucking gather <laughs> uh so when when did i have a bad trip i'm just thinking about it i mean listen uh you know, a lot of people talk about ayahuasca and talk about more of some of the heavier things. I'm a person and, you know, obviously all of the stuff is is not legal. It's not federally legal yet. Yes, Oregon and Colorado and other states are passing legislation. A big shout out to my friend Kevin Matthews. Mm-hmm. They just got the legislation in Colorado passed. Um, yeah, I'm... I don't take psychedelics as regularly as I used to. Um, But what I would say to you is like when I've had a bad trip, it's, it's let me kind of see things in a perspective to understand. Like you need to be like as psychedelics do become legal at some point, it's really important that it's in a therapeutic setting. Mm -hmm. It's really important that it's dosed correctly I'm, I'm a big believer of the FDA and federal authorities. And, you know, the problem is, is like anytime you get into these products, if they're not regulated in things properly, there can be side effects and things like that. So, I mean, you know, even with like the COVID vaccine, mm-hmm. and I don't want to get into like stuff like this too much, it's just important. There are, there are, rules and laws and governing bodies that are regulating these items like the DEA, the FDA and other people. And they truly want your best interest. I I do believe that there Mm. are good people. And I think in an element where there are so many, there, there, there have been so many bad actors, like it's really important for us to like, engage our local politicians it's important for us to you know be involved and support like this idea of like you know and i just got to get into it like uh not funding the police Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous are you know products not going through the fda no that's ridiculous too Mm -hmm. the beauty of the united states of america and this has been on my t- on my mind a lot i've been reading a lot of stuff that elon musk is putting out there and other people on twitter like i want to pay my taxes i want to be in a place where 
I have freedom of speech and I have the freedom to disagree and I'm not going to be locked up or I'm not going to be executed. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to do this too because, um, as I said, I'm Persian Jewish. I'm from Iran. My family's from Iran. Uh, you know, sending love and prayers to, you know, the 15,000 people that were just murdered in Mm -hmm. Iran because, they believe in women's rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want to be ruled by a dictatorship and communism. Yeah. yeah. I, the one thing I would say about that is like, man, if you if you've never been outside of the United States before, you don't know how lucky you are to to live here. I mean, oh my God, I, I listen to these like douchebags on Twitter, and I'm just gonna tell you that are in the crypto NFT space, and they all hang out in Dubai or the Middle East and they've all, oh yeah, I've given up my United States passport. I don't have to pay taxes anymore. Just stay there. Don't come back. Yeah. I know even <laughs> like, <laughs> stay there. <laughs> yeah. When, when people say, you know, they want to move, move out. Um, Cause I've lived abroad. I've seen how, how it is, or, you know, in other countries, how yeah. they, how they treat women, how, yeah. you know, people just don't have, education or you know access to healthcare access to water the simplest thing water you know water should be free and accessible to everyone so when people complain about you know like of course what what i loved for hawaii to be sovereign yes definitely you know yeah. it is what it is we're part of the, the united states you know whether you believe it's that that to be true whether it's legal or illegal illegal still yet um you know we just right as of right now we we can't change it yeah. you know we, we can work towards that but just just accept it and um know know how how much we have here and, yeah, and be, just be grateful you know, for that my my commentary of yeah. that has nothing to do with hawaii mm-hmm. uh, again i would say this in the best way possible i'm still 20 years later mm-hmm. uh still learning about what happened to Hawaii and the people that came here and uh, to be kind of, you know, very candid, I probably know 1% of the story Mm -hmm. and that's probably my own ignorance. Mm -hmm. And I I would say, if you're going to live here, you need to learn more and understand, you know, how this place came to be what it is. Yeah. I mean, rich, sad history, but you know, once you, once you get past all that, you, you get to learn about, you know, how amazing, how innovative, how well-respected the monarchs were, how how smart they were, and, you know, how how they, they traveled abroad, and, you know, they got to see the world and bring back that knowledge here in Hawaii, and we we're one of the most progressive places there in the world. There must be a reason every billionaire yeah. wants to live here. Right? Yeah. I mean, the law of spirit is real. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it must be that good. I yeah. mean, it is that good. Yeah, something something in the, the saltwater breeze or yeah. the the ocean. I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, well, mahalo for um, the Patreon questions. Our awesome Patreon supporters. Make sure you you um, check, Are those check live? us out. What? The Patreon questions? Oh, no, 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 oh, okay, no. Okay. I, I saw on, on our Patreon, I... I make a post for people who are like in the dollar tier or five dollar tier. Yeah. You, you can leave a question, cool. and then you can um, see like who's who's the upcoming guest. You you can um, give different benefits for different tiers. And let, let's yeah. make sure we get this out to our fifty thousand person newsletter list. Yes, yes. Sign let's, up for Patreon if you want to support the podcast. Yeah, support local. We'll have Ryan email this yeah, out yeah. to everybody. Yeah, and let let everybody know yeah. about the Hoiverse app as well. It, Absolutely. It, it it's out right now, so make sure you go check it out on the App Store. Um, okay, so uh, coming towards the back end of the podcast, I just want to know something simple. What do you love most about Hawaii? God, I love this place so much. What do I love <laughs> the most? I mean, as, as stupid as this is, the sunrise and sunset is some of the most, I mean, wow, the energy that I get from that. But my, my truth is the people. Mm-hmm. I mean... This sounds, and and a lot of people have been like asking me about this, like because you know JC is more newer to our organization, but like uh, just the people I've met here, like there's a handful of people I've met like yourself that, you know JC, Alec McBarnett, Chris Valda, like there are people that are just I've become super close with, which I. 
as I said in 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 the pre previous incarnation of myself, like uh, I wouldn't have. These are not necessarily people I would have connected with, and and mm -hmm. I think. If I were to say, what do I love about Hawaii? I love the people that I've met here. Mm -hmm. I love the people I meet at the farmer's market. Um, yeah, there's something about the people that drink the water here or that, you know, I love the surf. I love everything. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I'm a, uh, I'm a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii's number one fanboy right here. Oh, my David God. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go back to one of the things that happened to me in 1997 when I got to Maui. I met this guy that was living in his truck at the Kihei Cove. Mm -hmm. By the way, I love the Kihei Cove. It's, you know, one, one of the first places I barbecued, you know, in surfing. And uh, you know, he was living in his truck. He was like almost 90 years old wow. and I got to tell you, if it came down to that and I was going to have like an RV or truck and a mattress in the back, you know, JC and I always talk about this. That's how much I love this place. I would do mm -hmm. that. I it's, could live in Kayana Point, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's hot there. It is hot, but, you know, <laughs> you know, we have our mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you have uh, AC or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right. Um, so... La last question about um, Hawaii, and I want to get into like the business stuff before we end um, end the podcast. Yeah, is like, how do you feel like you're contributing to our local community as someone who is not from here? I mean, frankly, I mean, I me mean, said it paying taxes. No, and, I mean, I, I think that's one part of it. That's really one dimensional. Mm -hmm. I I really do on a day to day, like. At a certain point for all of us, and, you know, for me, my biggest asset is my time. And I will tell you that I do take the time every day to make sure that I connect and I help and I assist. I spend a couple hours a day empowering entrepreneurs and people of all segments of community and I don't want to say like I'm some, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for notoriety, but I can tell you that JC and I on a daily basis, we both do it together. Whether that's, you know, somebody that's working in our building or it's a local entrepreneur that reaches out to me that says, you know, can I read their lease that they're going to sign or something? Like I make sure to understand, like I have time to be on Instagram to fuck around and I have time to like go to the mall or go to the beach, I make sure I spend a couple hours a day wholeheartedly, consciously helping people that sometimes don't have the easiest time surviving on these islands. Mm -hmm. Money is easy. It's really easy for me to make a donation. And this goes back to my, you, you really need to interview Alec McBarnett. <laughs> I mean, I got to tell you out of, I mean, what a, what a person. Um, but he's somebody that came to me a number of years ago. And he said, David, you always tell me you're donating money. What, what are you really doing? And I think when he said that to me a number of years ago, I made sure to be very conscious to, to give my time. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've, I've always thought, too, is like time is the only thing we can't get back, right? Um, so just me, I'd rather give my hands than my money. Yeah, totally. You know, I mean, I don't have a lot of money, but even if I had, I feel like I, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there mm -hmm. sincerely. If there's anybody or anything that where somebody needs our time or they need our resources for a business or something they're involved with, we are happy to get involved and contribute and, uh, it would be our pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I vouch for him. I think I've known you uh, long enough and just spent enough time with you to know that that's sincere. Yeah, totally. So, we yeah, do it every, I, I appreciate JC that. and I do it every day. I mean, JC yeah. holds uh, yes. me accountable. JC <laughs> is also, like, if you know him, he's low-key the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Such a good heart. Like, I've seen him 
you know because he i don't know if people know him i'm not everybody in this audience know knows my friend jc but you know he has like this kind of tough guy you, need <laughs> you know to interview. Per, per, persona but yeah. i've seen him just like just out of nowhere just go walk over to 7-eleven buy some food and yeah. give it to like a homeless guy he sees doing um while he's doing surf lessons just to help him out he's like oh yeah that he knows knows that person's name and it's like yeah, yeah he knows his backstory and just like this is like people got to see this side of JC too. It's like so, so amazing. And like, I feel like all of us have that side, right? It's like, it's just not always there, documented. There, it's not always shown. There's a lot of JCs on the yes, island. Exactly. And you got to give those people an opportunity. Yeah. Be a JC. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he's going to hate us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just exposing him. Yeah. All right. Um, how do you balance your life with all the things that you're doing? I think you, uh, right before the podcast started, you said you have like a hundred things you you're invested in. <laughs> we are invested in. We are invested or strategically partnered with a lot of deals right now. How do I balance my time? Um, yeah, I, I I make sure my priority number one is my family and my children, mm -hmm. and which I respect because I think half of the time I've seen you, you're with your family. I have you, to. Yeah. It's it's I've given so much time to my business and other people that, you know, I, I I've as I said at 46, I've slowly started even saying to my family that I've made it like I've 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 I'm successful. I'm my worst critic. You know, that's just who I am as a person or my you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself, but. I, I make sure that I'm conscious. I have a lot of, I, I use meditation and spirituality and tools that I've learned. Um, I'm just conscious. I don't, uh, conscious of my time, uh, making sure that I take care of myself, health, my body. Um, I think my biggest thing, my mental conditioning, like mm -hmm. I do a lot of what I would call uh, brain exercises uh i really monitor what i put in my body um and i think you know just being accountable to yourself i i yeah i i want to exercise i want to spend time with my family i want to eat well i need to give sufficient time to my business i think one of the things that i do that just i have to do is i wake up at three or four in the morning and I meditate for at least an hour or two every day. Well, what does your meditation look like? A lot of journaling. Anybody mm -hmm. that knows me knows that I at least journal for an hour. Uh, I do a lot of vision boarding. You can obviously see my dining mm -hmm. room table, which yeah. is going to be disassembled for Thanksgiving. Oh, but yeah. uh, I vision board every day. Um, you know, I just I make sure that before I do anything like today, I, I knew because I, I have this thing with you, you know, you're somebody that I respect and, you know, you live a very Pono life. And I said, you know, I need to make sure that I'm in the best mental well-being mm -hmm. before I get into this podcast. Yeah, I think it worked out perfectly. Yeah, it did. We're I having a great was, conversation. Was, I think it was the right day. <laughs> yes, exactly. New moon. Yeah. Okay, well, um, what is the best business advice you've ever received? Work on something, whether you would do it for money or not. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you'd be doing it for free? Yeah. Or, like, if you weren't getting paid doing what you're doing, would you still do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love I love what I do. I would, I would, yes, I don't, if, if there wasn't, if there wasn't a monetary level of thing, of, of money or fiat, yes, I would do this for yeah. free. I agree. I mean, that's what Hawaii Verse is. It's a passion project that just happened to turn into a business. I mean, same with the podcast. Aren't those the same best way. businesses? It's it's the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I do f most everything in life for free if I didn't have to pay for rent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. What's the best business business advice you want to give? If you have a crazy idea to change the world for better, and again. <laughs> I know a lot of people come at this with like, it's not a joke. If you have an idea and you want to do something that's going to empower the human race, like if you look at, you know, everybody has, there's a lot of fanboys for Elon Musk. And I think Elon Musk is an incredible business person. But again, 
a lot of what he has worked on and things that he's doing are things that he's thought about as a child. And I think that thinking about things is one thing. I, I don't think a lot of people know there's $2 trillion of investment money out there mm -hmm. that can be attained. And I think if there was one thing in Hawaii specifically would be to know that there is funding out there and I think like using us as a resource to navigate people to go like actually try it out and like go and work on your wildest idea you should there's there's failure is a great thing and I'm, I'm gonna say this I've failed so many times I've you gotta fail mm -hmm. yeah. when, when entrepreneurs tell me they fail and again, there's a difference with, you know, the whole thing going on with FTX and like doing <laughs> bad things to people. But yeah. if you have given it you or your all and you haven't hurt somebody and you failed, I respect that. I actually nine times out of ten, nine, nine out of ten times, I will fund an entrepreneur that has failed at their business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like how many times are you going to get up, you know, Michael Jordan? He's, he's fallen so many times just to get back up. He got cut from his high school basketball team. Yeah. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. So it's not how, how you succeed. It's how you fail and, you know, come back from that. Yep. Definitely. Okay. What does success look like to you? What a diff what a, that's a hard question. And mm -hmm. I'm usually pretty good at answering questions. <laughs> success for me is having balance in life. Mm-hmm. And I'm still working on it. Yeah. What I'm a very, I'm a very, a lot of, I'm a Libra, so I'm supposed to be balanced. Every, <laughs> a lot of people tell me I'm balanced, but that's something I'm going to be working on for a long time. Yeah. And, and it, success for me now has come to a point where it's less about monetary success. And it's, it's, success for me is knowing that, uh, I've contributed to this world fully and I've, I've given it everything I have because at the end of the day, we're all going to die. Like it's just, it's, 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 oh my God, more than ever. I've been yeah. thinking about it. It's been, <laughs> it's been really weird. That's the other thing at 46 I've been. So I always tell people if I got 30 years left, I have to make sure like I really give back and like, like do good things every day. Like if I don't like right now, I've been talking to JC. I'm like, we got to do something for, for people for Thanksgiving. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people that are not going to have a Thanksgiving meal tomorrow. So for me, success is having that mindset of mm -hmm. giving back. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not not about money. It's just about you know. It is about money yeah. though. It, it's about, you need money to you need money to do it. And I don't yeah. and I don't want to be one of these people that sounds fake fake. Yeah. But if you have success on that financial level, dig a little fucking deeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess there's levels, right? Success for me now is making sure mm -hmm. that I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. This may sound. I I want to be more like you, Kamaka. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, I'm good at slacklining, so maybe that's where my my balance comes from. <laughs> You're a very balanced person. <laughs> I I like to think so. I think that's one of the most yeah. important things I like to focus on is have, having a a great balance between myself, friends, families, relationships. Yeah. You know, like I'm not afraid to be like, hey, I'm gonna work hard six days out of the week, but seven on the seventh day. Sunday, I'm going to watch football all day and just focus on my fantasy football. And you can't tell me nothing. I love <laughs> That's that. my balance. <laughs> all right. I, was, um, I, I wrote about it in my book. I call it me time, free time, and community time. I love that, that. That's, that's how I balance everything out. <laughs> all right. Um, so let's, let's end, end the podcast with talking about um, your, what, what you're doing next, you know, your, your future goals. Right now, you're... You're focused on plant-based, what it, can you tell, um, psychedelic yeah, I mean, plant-based therapy. That, that's right. one element of the business. Okay. I mean, right now, more than anything I'm, I'm focused on is uh, one of the big issues, you know, 
we own a number of wholly owned subsidiaries to Orthogonal Thinker. Orthogonal Thinker is a holding company. It has 50 plus companies and investments inside of it. One of the big things that we're working on right now is really funding and the idea of companies that get funding and you know what it takes to actually operate and execute a successful startup. And a lot of what we're working on today is pulling the power out of what I would say the traditional venture capital banking community. So one of the biggest things we're working on is, yeah, helping people take an idea and actually being able to get the funding that they need and be able to execute the idea where it has critical mass. And mm. I would say that we're actually about to start fundraising for Orthogonal Thinker. And what we've done with Orthogonal is we've executed a vision where we have not gone the traditional way of going to venture capitalist. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's a big thing for me. I think a lot of people have a story in their head of how companies get funded and how things happen. Let me tell you, whatever story you've told yourself, it's, it's not accurate. <laughs> so there are a lot, there's a lot of different stories. I love the Hawaiian phrase, talk story. Yeah. But one of our biggest initiative was, initiatives on Orthogonal is to disrupt how funding gets done for startups. Mm, okay. And even so with some of your business ventures, like uh, some of your startups, like um, Silly, yeah. um, you're, is, how, are, how are you funding that? Well, right now I can't really get too much into Silly, mm -hmm. but I will tell you that we have another initiative that we're working on right now called Web3 Ventures. Oh, interesting. And Web, you know, everybody that knows me knows I love Web3. I love the idea of NFTs as intellectual property. I love community building. But, you know, Web3 Ventures is... It's like is, the metaverse? No, what, oh, Web3... What so Web3 is a concept of giving power back to the community and having digital rights. But what we're doing with Web3 is we're redefining how companies get funded and go public. Mm. And uh, actually next week, we've actually started publishing stuff on my Instagram of what we're doing with Web3. But it's it comes back to the disruption of how companies get funded and how companies go through the cycle of investment banking and other things. And mm. I know I'm not doing the best to describe it, but there's a concept that we're working on called orthogonal portal. Okay. And this concept takes people down that cycle. Web3, which is a company that we own now, is also going through that cycle of funding and community building. And I think when I think about Web3 and crypto and everything else, for me, it all comes down to the community. Um, as I said, we have a newsletter with about 50,000 people that subscribe to what we write about. And it's really, unfortunately, fortunately, we started our conversation today talking about like how to incentivize people or how to you know, get people to do things. I think, I think that the world is changing fundraising is changing how companies go public is changing and we want to we've funded a lot of companies and we've been on that path where we've seen companies that we've invested in go public and we believe that there are ways to disrupt that model mm. Well, I'm interested to see how that works, and I'm sure it's going to be successful. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I, th I think I, I hear... Um, so oh, you're, you're, I thought that was your kids coming in the door. They're on they're, they're, they're the way. I, was gonna I say, know they've landed. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> have them come say hi on the podcast, yeah. but I don't think that's yeah, them. Yeah, they'd love to. <laughs> all right, so if you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? I would say just to go back to what a lot of people you know say to me is my heart mm -hmm. um i lead with my heart and i i think when yeah i think when people think of me i want them to remember my heart mm -hmm. yeah you're pu'uvai that's the line word I, I can tell you it's something that uh mm -hmm. i uh, with i have a, actually 
I would say our organization today has a lot of people that we all connect with because of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you that JC, again, is another heart filled, you know, that's how we connect it. Yeah. Awesome. What, what is one thing you think people misunderstand about you? Business. Business? In yeah, what sense? I think, I think, well, I mean, I, I definitely, I think people think sometimes I'm aggressive and selfish. And I think that there's a, that you, it's not about being aggressive and selfish in business and in just in life, you have to have self-love. And it's something that's taken me 46 years to sort of perfect. Mm. And what I do is I make sure that if I don't have self-love for myself, I'm not going to be able to give that to other people. Mm. So, yeah, I'm a person that, that, that draws significant boundaries with people. Um, and yes, I, I can be aggressive in the business, but I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. I don't like to fail. And I think that given the environment of today, and again, we haven't gotten into this where we are in a recession, uh, there's quantitative tightening. The government has printed $30 trillion in you know, free money. Wow. Um, you're going to have to be a little bit aggressive and you're going to have to like uh, have, uh, you know, you're going to have to make sure your family and the people around you are okay. So I take my business and uh, things around me very seriously. I don't mess around when it comes to money and business. Yeah. I mean, those are kind of more serious matters. So you should be. Yeah. But yeah. I, but <laughs> you know, sometimes that can come off selfish and aggressive. Yeah, it's just the, the world that you live in or that, that space, you know. It is, and I, and I think that, you know, the other thing is 90% uh, of our staff are mm -hmm. lawyers. And I think that when the world today is, is lawyers, uh, that's going to affect you. Yeah, very true. All right. All right, so before the podcast ends, we always have to ask our guests, what is your life hack? I mean... What is my life hack? My, my, my life hack is to always make sure that I am, like every day I've evolved to be a better person. Like I have to every day make sure I wake up and I've like worked on a habit loop or I've like disrupted something about myself that I wanna change. And mm -hmm. I think that it may sound silly but if, if you're not conscious of the hack, it's never going to happen. Hmm. It's like, um, it's like being aware. It's like, uh, what is it like? X, where it's like the, one of the, the forms of X, uh, moving on. It's like acceptance. Well, I think one of, the, one of the thing is, is I, I write affirmations every morning mm. and I, okay. So I'll, I'll give you, what is yeah, my, yeah, give, what yeah, is give my us life, an, my journaling? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I would, I would probably say, and I'm thinking about Gopal, a good friend of mine, he mm -hmm. would say, David's life hack is his journaling. So I manifest through mm -hmm. my journaling. Yes. It's just speak thing, write things to existence, speak things I've, to existence. I've been, I've been journaling for over 30 years oh, every awesome. day. awesome. Isn't it cool when you, when you write something down and then you look back at it whenever you, you've accomplished that thing and... Yeah. It's like, wow, I wrote that. I, I predicted that. I manifested that. It's I said, very I would, empowering. I said I would have big crystals around me all the time. So I have these <laughs> big <laughs> amethysts. Nice. I Now with Twitter and like um, the social media platforms, you can just like tweet it too. So make it super public. Like when I, um, before I paid off my student loans, I, I wrote about it. I, I tweeted it a year before that saying, I'm going to pay off $53,000 student loans in one year. And I'm just writing this now so I can look back at it and give myself a high five. I think our I think our lawyers think I'm too public. So I think they're <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe we're different. Yeah. yeah, I I I think I'm I can be a little bit more public than you can. It's all good. Yeah, especially with like these big business ideas. Yeah. I can't just give away. You, you can't just give away your secrets. Not always. <laughs> all right. Uh, I have my last five rapid fire questions. Okay. Favorite spot on the island. Kayana Point. Besides Kayana Point. <laughs> I will tell you, I have definitely had a, 
I don't know the background, and maybe this is to you and JC. I really do love Ala Moana Park. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I think it's something. It, it reminds me of like Central Park. It's mm. what I always tell people. I, I live next to the Central Park of it's the Honolulu. Hawaiian Central Park. Yeah, I mean, there's just. I love chatting with the homeless. I love just. I mean, the one thing that puts a smile on my face is every Friday to Sunday or holiday including ourselves we do it too is everybody setting up and the barbecues i mean for me that is hawaii mm. yeah it's ohana it's ohana. oh my god yeah. big time ohana yeah i love that okay favorite book oh god that's a tough one i mean top three books i'm, I'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna do this to not try to be over the top i mean I would probably say The Four Agreements. I love it. I, I reference that book a lot. I, I So I listen to it once a week. Mm -hmm. You listen to the audiobook once yeah. a week? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like actually once a week? Maybe more than that. What? That's yeah. crazy. How long does it take you to listen to the whole Not thing? Not long. I can do it in a, in a session, you know, oh, okay. a couple hour session. I, yeah. And I usually listen to it like two times the speed. Okay. But yeah, I would say be impeccable with your word mm -hmm. yes i i say that a lot in like business and like even with jordan it's like we said we're gonna do this yeah. podcast yes many exactly times. i said let's both <laughs> be impeccable to our work yes yes and uh, even um for example like um before doing this we had a lot going on like yeah. I, I have to fly to Hilo right after this we're like okay how are we gonna fit this in and we're like okay and we, we said we're gonna do it we're gonna do yeah. it be impeccable, be impeccable with yes. Yes. thank you jc yes yes <laughs> the middleman <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right uh favorite physical activity surfing surfing yeah i love it it's, yeah. it's the one thing why not surf when you're here right oh my god it's and take and advantage when you of live it here your surfing is always elevated yeah awesome okay favorite local restaurant I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get this right. What is my favorite? I mean, I. I will have to give it to them. Just. Be, I mean, can I do two? Yeah. I'm gonna say this for Oahu. Okay. I would say on the on the North Shore side, Cosmic Kitchen and huh. and Celestial. I just have to give it to them. Celestial is a organic market that's been there probably since the '60s. And there's a little crew on the backside of Cosmic Kitchen that makes like raw vegan food. And I would probably say uh, Peter Merriman and Cody from the Merrimans and, and Monkey Pod. They are just, it's a big business. Like it's, they're, they're restaurateurs, but the idea that 80, 90% of, of what they do is farm to table. Mm. Um, and they are a local family. Yeah. Uh, that's a big deal to me. So I would I would say that, you know, Cosmic Kitchen and Merriman's. Okay. I haven't been to either of those, so I got to go check I'd, that I'd, out. I'd love to take yeah. you, you and Sierra. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Double date. Yep. <laughs> Maybe a uh, quad. Uh, we'll take everybody. Yeah, well, everybody. We'll JC, Jenna, everybody. Yeah. Ophelia. <laughs> we'll take everybody. Dorian, Lily, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Favorite spiritual slash physical practice? Vision boarding. Mm -hmm. is that is is that essential in your it's, life i have to vision board all the time i mean i'd let you see what i'm mm. working on on my table but uh yeah just also being out in nature yeah i know you, you like to just hike kind of point i do so that's i mean I've, I've actually hiked yeah. kind of point over a thousand times <laughs> that's crazy i i i know i keep telling you this you know, too. i haven't I, even you been know, there at one point they asked me to register and they were they were telling me to text them when i was coming they thought it was strange <laughs> that i was hiking it every day <laughs> this guy i think that you there's like squatter rights right if you're there yeah. enough right you own yeah. the land or something <laughs> how does that work <laughs> uh, you know well they, they told me that at a, I, you know i finally got my i'm finally getting my kind point tags right now <laughs> so i'm excited awesome all right well that's all we have for the podcast um mahalo so much for inviting us into your house and talking stories with us do you have anything else you want to share uh grateful for mm -hmm. you and your crew and uh taking the time out this early morning and uh yeah what i would say it's thanksgiving tomorrow it's the new moon uh give back 
uh, there's there's always somebody out there that is having a harder time than you are mm -hmm. and I think that's something that I wake up every morning knowing that I am super blessed and grateful to be living on these islands mm -hmm. and uh, please reach out to me yes. I, I, I I love connecting with people especially on Hawaii yeah where can we find you where can people reach out to you uh, Instagram handle at silly life LinkedIn. Can you spell that? Because I know it's, it's uh, at P S I L L Y Life. Um, you'll find me. I'm yeah. on the interwebs. Just, it's not, that, it's not that hard yeah. to find me. Yeah, and uh, for those who are listening, uh, you'll be hearing this after Thanksgiving uh, passes. So I hope you've had a really great Thanksgiving yeah. and you're able to appreciate the people you're around, eat some Ono food, maybe have a good Kanak attack, watch some football games, play some games with your family big shout out yeah. to hawaii verse yeah mahalo make sure you go check out our app it's available and it's free you know you can support local businesses just by joining and uh, make sure you keep spreading the word so uh, mahalo david for joining us on the hawaii verse podcast check us out on hawaiiverse.com the best place to support local spread aloha be kind to one another and mahalo for listening to us today new episodes every thursday so make sure you follow us and leave a review i'm your host kamaka and you'll hear me next time on the hawaii verse podcast ahui ho Thank <laughs> you.